Okay, today's daf is uh, daf Gimel and Shkalim, uh, number three. Uh, the Gemara says in Gimel and Bez, um about who uh, they demanded people to pay the Shkalim. Um, the Gemara says that, the Mishnah says on Gimel and Bez, "Amim Mashkin Levim Yisrael Megayim Avadim Mishukarim, Avalo Nashim Avadim Mikdanim." A katan, someone who's under the age of thirteen, or maybe the other under the age of twenty, he's not. He doesn't have to give a a, a shkalim. He doesn't have. He doesn't have to. He's not. They don't. They don't demand uh, to him to pay the shekel. Katan shehiskiel avi lishkal yado shuleno pose. But once a father already decided to pay the sh- the shekel for his son, so the the son seemingly or the father has to continue to pay in future years. Marta says. Ein memashkin esaktanim halitvo atovin. How did the same mark be shehevish teisaros? Even though we say you're not memashkin and you don't, um, you don't um, uh, force take a mashko and mashko means you go into the person's house, you take a mashko, the collateral, and force the the child uh, to pay through the mashko. You don't do that to a child. Uh, that's someone under the age of. of of 20 but if he already is 13 he, he has simonim he's 13 years old and uh, and one day and has simonim he has signs that he's he's a god so once he's 13 already he has he we're tovea it from him i mean we ask him to pay it even though we don't take a mashka when they collateral we ask him to pay it so the question over here is what's the difference if it's a mitzvah to pay a shekel so cotton when we ask it from him 13 so why until the age of 20, don't we take the mashkun if that's what we do for everybody else? And the second question is, is that we said that a father who started to pay for his son, who was under the age of 20, who started, we, we do take a mashkun from who? From who do we take the mashkun? We take it in future years from the father? Or what if the father's not around? Do we take it from the son? And if it's true, we take it from the son. So why would the son have to pay, take a mashkun now, if he's normally not eligible to, to be taken a mashkon from, um, why is he eligible well, now if a father paid in previous years? Why is how could a father uh, put this chov upon his his child? Um, I want to answer that basically um, the chiv of to give a shekel for the karbanos a sibor um, is a responsibility, and we all know that a, a child when he's thirteen years old has a, is chayiv in mitzvos. What is a mitzvah? So we said previously mitzvos is basically that. You now have free choice. You have the ability to make decisions now. And a mitzvah means that it's up to you. You can choose when to do something, when to not do something. When it's appropriate to do something, you'll do it. When it's not appropriate, you won't do it. And therefore, when he's 13 years old, we ask him for the mashko. And he has to decide based on his financial status or, you know, what he, what, uh, where he is in life or, you know, a lot of different factors factor in whether he thinks it's appropriate for him to give it or not doesn't mean he has to. It means he has to decide whether it's appropriate or not. Once he's 20 years old, it becomes he becomes chayiv in onshim. He's chayiv in karbonos. Karbon is a uh, responsibility. Uh, once you're 20 years old, life throws responsibilities at you, and you have to take care of those responsibilities. At that point, we take a mask from him where he has to pay it because at 20 years old, you're, you're responsible. Uh, you become a responsible person. You have to become a responsible person. So therefore, that would be the distinction, that when he's 13 years old, he has to make decisions. We ask him to pay. We think it might be a good idea, but if he has a good reason not to, then it's up to him. He doesn't have to do it. Once he's 20, we take a mashka and we force him to do it because he's high of responsibilities. We said in the Mishnah that the father starts to pay for the son when he's under the age of 20. So then he, he every year, the, the, the child has to pay. Who has to pay? So the Karmanita says, uh, the, the Mefarish over here says, that the next year his father has to give it. It sounds like that the katan wouldn't have to give the next year if his father's not around. Uh, the only problem with this is that the Mishnah says the subject of shuvein oposig doesn't stop. It's going on the katan. So the seeming explanation from the Mishnah, I would like to suggest that maybe there's other mafarshim that say this that really the chi of even if the father were to die or not be around, the cotton would still have to bring uh, the shekel the next year. Why is that? Because uh, 
if a child, like we said, there's two parts to the mitzvah. There's the mitzvah where the decision making. <coughs> Whether it's appropriate or not, and then there's the responsibility. Now, even though he's under twenty, he's not responsible yet for, for responsible things. But uh, once his father already started to do it, so therefore the Torah is declaring the Torah. The Mishnah is stating that even though normally it's a mitzvah and you make the choice, and if you're poor or you have other circumstances, you don't have to pay it. The Torah is telling you that now. Uh, the, the advice of the Torah is that you should be giving it. Once your father did it, he made you a responsible person. He made you a responsible person under the age of 20. So the Torah deems that it's not really a choice anymore. It's actually a responsibility on the child, even though he's not, quote-unquote, a responsible person yet. But the Torah is telling you that's the direction that it's no longer a choice anymore. And we do take a mashkon from the child uh, to say that not the Torah's mashkon, and rather the Torah's mitzvah. Uh, that the Torah is telling you it's your responsibility. It's your, it's your responsibility, responsibility to be a responsible person. So there's no dini mamonis, there's no chiyuv and mamon, but there is a mitzvah, a mashkin midin mitzvah.